Now, when you speak to a geologist, and you can say that they love rocks. It's uh, kind of strange for people who don't know anything about rocks. <laughs> um, but the truth is, is when you break a rock down, it's made up of a variety of different minerals. And what I look at is the chemistry of those different minerals and how they compare across the different volcanoes. Now, this can be quite complicated for people to understand, um, but it's actually really simple. So what I've done is turn it into a metaphor where these minerals that are in my box, um, whose chemical analysis I got using the phone microscope, um, are pirate ships on the magnetic sea. So I hope you enjoy it. It's going to be fun. Um, so it should be. <laughs> Here we go. Deep in the heart of the Caribbean Sea lies an island shrouded in mystery. One of eleven Dominicas still unique. She has her own story, of which we shall speak. This story is one retold through the ages of pirates and prisoners and volcanic rages. Alone on her surface, the rocks sit and wait for geologists to come and tell their fate. These rocks hold the record of the pirates washed ashore by the forces of eruptions, whose other evidence is no more. Locked in these rocks, pirate minerals be, and locked in these minerals is the story we'll see. Now, many of these pirates don't like the wrong. They've been picked up and carried by waves quite strong. This happens sometime on the Andesitic Sea, where pirates are thrown out or picked up for free. Which story to believe is the question to ask. Sorting it out is the geologist's task. And so, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, here is the story of the pirate minerals that sail the ocean blue. <laughs> our story begins deep, deep underground, at the port where our pirate's crew can be found. It is here in this place that elements roam free, looking to become sailors on the magmatic sea. With the crew that they need, our minerals heal away. They are ready for the journey and shall not delay. The first ship to leave port has a dastardly crew. Only silica and magnesium or iron will do. All of these are called, and their presence is of note, for they require quite specific conditions to float. They can't travel far unless they do so with speed, but they come under attack should the temperature be. Their presence suggests one of two things, either fast rising magma or mixing of stings. The next ship to leave ports are kind of very things called. They're often not special unless they've been mauled. In our case, these ships are an anomalous clue, but they for the same crew survive every eruption like new. This homogenous group suggests something a bit strange that every eruption began at a similar range. The next ship in our party is the second pier of steam, or does she made, and this one's not green. In a single volcano, her story is quite boring. She changes nothing when she stuck to her boring. Check so again with the others, and you'll see a big change. When present in different centers, oil has quite a range. It appears that this mineral is one of the few that grew with the magma and has always been true. Now, Delia's flag place is the last to leave port, and she is a ship with whom many hold court. Although silica and alumina are her main crew, we study sodium, sodium and potassium too. The ratio of these sailors tells quite a tale. They keep excellent records of their rivers and their gale. In most rocks, this ratio would highly variable be. But in our rocks, again, things are strange, as you'll we'll see. When I speak of pledge place, I actually mean three. Three different shifts of this crystal exist in every eruption, not even one mist. One facet, one sodic, and one <laughs> in between. And none in equilibrium, from which we can glean two separate magnets must have been on the sea. Now, Fragile Place is quite 
where the genius girl shall show you around just to leave your world. To look from her evidence of this mixing, we must turn toward the pirates we know we can trust. The best evidence of mixing in temperature lies that the different pirates come to the stories, which is no surprise. Let's start with the simplest, told by yours own and sack. The thermometer takes a magnetite and ailment as a pack. Iron oxides are called, so they contain titanium too. You can tell the equilibrium by the manganese group. Their story is simple, it's not a prisoner exchange. Magnetite releases ferrous iron, that's how it's arranged. These pirates are honest, there is no disgrace. The story tells only of 800 to 880 Celsius days. Now, black carbon hornblende has a story to tell of temperatures lower than the oxide itself. A siren she is with a shiny exterior, recording both temperature and pressure. She thinks she's superior. To monitor temperature, so that the index keeps track. Compliments of her adult and lovely share that. These temperatures are lower than we thought they would be, but they're calculated with amicable only, as though she was free. In the Amazonic Ocean, this is never really true, for horn blood enters later than all the others I'm going through. When amicable meets plastic plates, there's an exchange of cactus cattle, and Holland and Grundy keep track of those expelled. Their records indicate temperatures higher than before, which means we now have three temperatures to which each part of war. And so, dear audience, it is now time to review the completed story that we believe is true. From climate therapy, we know that through one large chamber to all eruptions go. And next, from Ortho Pyrexine, we see that for each volcano, a separate chamber there must be. Now, all of you tells us that some mixing did occur, but the timing and extent are still a bit of a blur. From magnetite, ammonite, and amicable too, we get a picture of temperatures present before the, the volcanoes blew. From all this, we can garner that our system is quite complex. Much more work must be done to show, however, if our model is correct. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the story is no more. The rocks told as much of those pirates washed ashore with whole ships and half ships and sailors galore. <laughs>